Hello, friends, and welcome finally to your first Ipswich Town podcast of the week. It may be the only one. Who knows? Exciting, isn't it? I am Mark Heath. With me, two, I'd say definitely the best kings, Andy the Hutchman Warren and Roscoe the Beard the Prospect, the hairy one, Ross Halls. Friends, um, first of all, apologies. We didn't bring you a podcast yesterday because we were recording a Christmas special, which will be with you on Christmas Day. Um, we had a lot of fun. We learned a lot about each other. Uh, and ultimately, I think Christmas was the winner. If you can hear that noise, that's Benson trying to force his way into, into the studio. I do apologise. I do have some Christmas treats in here, and that's probably what he's after. Anyway, friends, I'm rambling. Let's get on with the show, shall we? And let's introduce the two men I've just referenced. First of all, the Roscoe, the Ross Halls. How are you? I'm very well. And um, do you know what, Heafy? You keep saying your favourite kings every time, and, you know, it's different people every week, so... I refuse. Mm, I no, know. that's not the case uh, at all. I don't know what you're talking mm. about. You two are my favourite and the best kings. Okay. Um, you, uh, you, you said before you think you're probably the best anyway, didn't you, Ross? You told me. That's what you told me off air. Yeah, yeah, of course. Standard. Standard. I yeah. think the people would agree. Hutchie, who's the best king in your eyes? You. Oh, nonsense. Stop it. Come on. Um, Who's the best? Who's the best? All things considered, I, I would say... That Mike Bacon is the best. Oh, because he, he's, he's the oldest. Bought, yeah, he's bought my daughter a Christmas present because he's oh. a lovely. He's a lovely man. Oh, populist Bacon activities. Um, I haven't got any of you Christmas presents, friends, because I'm your superior, and therefore I shouldn't have to bother with things like that. Um, you should be getting me gifts. That's the official line. Um, I haven't. <laughs> fair enough. Right then, let's talk about football, shall we? Um, on Saturday which seems like an age ago now, but we do have to talk about it because it's the only thing that's really happened since we last spoke. Ipswich Town travelled to Wickham, a hell of a place to go, um, and they lost. <laughs> they lost, boys. They lost 1-0. Um, to, to, to use Hutchie's phrase from the weekend, there will be no Christmas number one for Ipswich Town. Um, I've been off for a few days, so full disclosure, I haven't paid the most attention to this game. So you boys are going to have to do some heavy lifting. Hutchie, do you want to kick us off by, by bench pressing a thought about this game? I'm going to dissect your opening statement of Wickham being a hell of a place to go. <laughs> um, what's what's the criteria for that? Because I quite uh, like the I quite like the ground. It's on an mm -hmm. industrial estate, which not so. No, it's an interesting one. It's on an industrial estate, but also surrounded by trees and in a bit of a valley. It's that sounds nice. It's a, yeah, it's 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 a mix of emotions going going to Wickham. Um, My reference there to it being a hell of a place to go is generally that it's not the easiest place for Ipswich Town to go last season, not included. Um, that was my thinking. And that's why I, in the pre, in the, uh, the December preview, I said that my head tells me Town are going to lose here. I ended up predicting a 1-1. As it was, I should have stuck with the head. Um, and it was 1-0. It was always, always stick with your head, I would say. Um, you'll never be disappointed if you stick with your Stick with your head. Um, that, that's a, the full. The full. <laughs> there's, there's a Christmas message, kids. Yeah, the, the full follow set. Follow your heart. Yeah, no, never follow your heart. It'll take you off in awful directions that you'll regret later. Yeah. Um, full set for Ipswich at Wickham now. Um, a, a win, a draw, and a loss in three visits there in in League One, and they've um, sadly completed the set with a loss when they're the best team of the lot. Of the of the three that they've they've sent there over those years, which is a which is a shame, um, and not being top at Christmas is a real shame as well because that's um that's a really nice kind of marker to have. Mm. Um, ultimately, though, we'll, we'll discuss the nuts and bolts in a minute. But ultimately, the the loss doesn't change my confidence in in this Ipswich team and their ability to be uh, either either number one in May, just as prestigious. Some great songs have been number one in May, I would imagine. Um, not just Christmas, um, but yeah, it's, it's a, di a disappointment. But it's not it's not kind of shaken anything in in terms of my confidence in the team. Let's be honest, no one no one cares at all about Christmas number one anymore, do they? I I only found out the other day that something called Lad Baby has been number one at Christmas for the past four years. I couldn't name you a single one of those songs, or indeed what Lad Baby is. If it's a person, a thing, I don't know what it is. It sounds hellacious, whatever it is. Roscoe. Yeah. We can just do you want to talk about that? I can tell you Should what just, it is. Are, are oh, you go on. Yeah. Yeah, continue, yeah. It's um it's a couple from I believe Nottingham who are uh YouTube sent slash Facebook video sensations. They they talk about sausage rolls and um 
unusual unusual uh approach to parenting okay are you are you one of their are you one of their fans no um i've i have i i have i have witnessed some of their videos i say witness i mean watched yeah um i think they've had an official tie-up with greg's along the way which would which would tell you a fair amount about where they're at Hmm. um that's the and, and and it's propelled them to the top of the charts. But I think it is also a very good example, Mark, of why the the, the charts are now nonsense. And and completely irrelevant and no one cares about them. And and the fact that Ipswich Town on top at Christmas doesn't really matter, does it? Let's be let's be honest. They're still second. Ross, um, before we get to the game, I want to ask you a question about your game day video, which every week now you're bringing you're bringing creativity to the party. Mm. And this week you brought creativity in the form of shooting your intro at it's which waterfront, which when I was watching, I thought, why is he doing this? What's going on? And then you did a bit in the car park with the boys, which again, I applauded. I like to see behind the scenes stuff in which both of them revealed that you were late. So mm-hmm. I, I want, I want you to talk me through the, the idea in your head of, Oh, you must've been late as you walk into the thing. I'll just stop now and do my intro. The boys won't mind if I'm a bit later. Um, what was, what was the thought process there? You know, waterfront, it's waterfront is, you know, very scenic. Um, at this stage, I didn't, I didn't think I was late. I was like, I looked at my clock. I mean, I've got enough time to do this. Um, I had to actually go back because I was staying at my mum's that night because um, it's just easier to get to the office from there. And mm. I actually had to run back because I left my actually my phone there, which is um, n- nothing, not, you know, not something I would do. Um, so when I was walking on the waterfront, I thought, I've got enough time here. I've got a good five minutes. Um, I filmed it. Did it in one take, by the way, just, just to let you know. Um, a lot of people know this. I don't normally do that. It takes about five attempts. And I was just, I was walking. I was like, oh, crap, it's five past ten. And it's very icy you know, on the surface. So I literally slipped a few times. Um, but, yeah, I was late. Um, got a little bit of a slap by the boys. But um, all good in the hood in the end. I enjoyed it because Stu and, Stu and Hutchie hate doing stuff like that. I think it's fair to say that kind of behind the scenes stuff. So you forced them into it. And I like the way you said, how are you feeling, boys? And Stu just went, late. <laughs> yeah. No, that was Hutchie. That was Hutchie. Oh, was it Hutchie? Yeah, that was me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. But I would say that the mark of a man is telling someone you're late when you're already late. I've got the message in front of me now. We, we had agreed to meet at 10. The message to say you were late came at six minutes past 10. Yeah. That's when I realised I was late. I was like, oh, yeah, oh, God, that was the time. Yeah. Classic so, Roscoe. I enjoy it. Anyway, like I say, you, you're really bringing creativity now to game day. Everyone is different, uh, uh, and I'm, I'm enjoying it. More of that behind-the-scenes stuff as well, because partly because I like to see it and partly because I know how much Stu and Hutchie hate doing stuff like that. So uh, more of that, please. Um, Roscoe, what did you make of the game when you eventually got to High Wycombe? Um, as you were saying, a hell of a place, just like Andy. It's very scenic with the you know mm. the, the, the trees and all that. Um, you know, they've upgraded a little bit. They've added some more um, gazebos. What do you call them? Gazebos? What are they called? G- Ga- Gazi- 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 gazebos. Gazebos. <laughs> oh, God. What you've described there is the cross. That would be like a, te- a tented <laughs> casino, maybe. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> Possibly. Um, but yeah, but it is one hell of a place to get out of as well because there's one way in, one way out. The traffic after the game was horrendous, but we'll get on to that later. But um, yeah, the game itself, standard Wickham, scrappy. Um, it was cold, by the way, Adams Park, bloody cold. I was freezing my butt off from minute one I got there. And I, we also realised that the Wickham reporter who said to me before the game, there's no food so get ready. So me and Andy and Stu had to go to Tesco to get a meal deal. And then we get to the ground and I realise there's shepherd's pie. So, you know. No no food. You mean no food in the press room as opposed to yeah, this until, food at the ground? Yeah, yeah, of course. But, you know, I was, we were told, I was told that there was no food. You, so mean food you mean food that you've got to pay for, which is an outrage. And obviously, um, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. You shouldn't have, you but, shouldn't have to pay for it. No. Once again, it's, it's 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 a bit of a bonus if we get press food, but when we get told, normally you get like lasagna and stuff. Andy said a funny story that when he was writing the five year deal for Paul Lambert, we were eating lasagna in the press room before that. But yeah, yeah shit was pie in the end. Uh, where am I going with this? Yeah, we lost. There we go. Okay, okay. Hutchie, do you want to do you want to take that thread and run with it? Um, town lost, which is ultimately the story of this game. I know. Yeah. In the green room beforehand, you said I haven't really got a lot to say but I'm going to force you to keep talking about it. So uh, anything else to add? The team. 
I guess was a bit surprised, wasn't it, in terms of Wolf and Dunn and Danassian both dipping out. Um, what did you make of the side when when it was unveiled at two pm? Uh, yeah, it, a, a surprise and not a surprise. I, I, it didn't surprise me that Danassian didn't make it. I think the way that McKenna was talking about that on uh, Thurs, Thursday when he did his presser was kind of trending towards Danassian not playing in the game um, mm-hmm. due to an ankle ankle injury that he picked up against Peterborough. Wolfenden, as many people will have seen, was being discussed uh, quite roundly on social media in the lead up to it. Um, anywhere from, I think it started off as he, he's out for six months, he might need to be put down, um, <laughs> uh, that kind of thing. Uh, and as it is, he could be back for Boxing Day. Um, with the, and we don't know if it's an adductor or an abductor issue. We've it's been here before, the, haven't we? Yeah. I think, I does it matter? It does it? Does it matter? It's just in that area. Um, it's a it's, it's a doctor. Yeah, he's got a the old doctor. <laughs> he, he's, a, he, he's out with a doctor issue, but that du- that du- that doctor issue should only keep him out for the, for, for the Wickham game, possibly Oxford, but he'll be back for Portsmouth. So no, no, um, no great dramas there. Lee Evans back on the bench was a, a surprise, but a pleasant one. We don't get mm. pleasant surprises very often with Ipswich. This one was, um, and from there. Um, I'm trying to remember what the rest of the team was. Jackson slipping back from central striker to to the wide on the left didn't surprise me at all. With, with I think you had to play Ladapo in this one, mm-hmm. which Town did, and I thought he did. I think he did pretty well. Um, the game in general, though, we've we've barely barely talked about it, but it's it, it was decent from Town without without bordering into good. I would say Town with a better team. I don't I don't know if. I would describe this as kind of same old Wickham, actually. I was pretty disappointed in them. I don't think they did anywhere near enough of the stuff that um, we expected them to do to to make me think that they should have won this game. I, I think there was it wasn't quite the same kind of oomph that we've seen from Wickham in the past, but that just makes it all the more disappointing that Town ultimately lost it. Um, and they wouldn't have lost it had, had they not conceded a poor goal before before half time. I'm, I'm I'm sure you've seen the gold back market. It's not um it's not finest, it's not the finest piece of work from it from Ipswich Town. Um mm. the, the strike it was, to- it was totally against run of play as well, wasn't it? From what yeah, I've- at that uh, yeah, largely. Um it's just this disappointing all round for all those reasons, really, because t- town were okay, they weren't great, they conceded the poor goal. It was it wasn't at a time where it felt like that goal was gonna come. Um, and then they didn't really force the issue as they'd have liked either. So all in all, it kind of adds up to just a, a really sort of disappointing but not catastrophic day. Would, would that be your take on it, Roscoe? Because, I mean, if you look at the stats, Town, town were dominant in terms of all the kind of key areas, um, and yet they've come away with a, with a defeat. Um, I think Stu said earlier in the season, didn't he, that they've never, Town have not yet this season, gained points where they didn't really deserve them. It's been the opposite. So games have lost maybe or drawn. They've, they've deserved to win. Would you say that continued that, this trend then, Roscoe, watching from the sidelines? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we were the better side and we didn't really deserve to lose. But yeah, mm. the goal we conceded was was very bad, very poor. I remember I was on the other side of the pitch and looking up and just seeing this figure, number 18, Brandon Handlin, just waltz through our defence and score. Um, but yeah, just like yeah, Stu said, you know, the, the defeats this season, we've only lost three games. In those three games, we've been pretty much the better side or it's been even. Um, mm. but yeah, I thought Town were pretty good in this game, really. They had a few moments where they should, should have scored. Ladapo in the first half, kind of Chaplin sort of had the best chance in the first half for us, you know, scuffing his shot. Um, but just, yeah, just, just Wickham are hard to break down. They are really hard to break down. And, you know, we found out in the second half... Oh, the cliche is like we could have been there all day and we, you know, <laughs> should have played the card. Yeah, played a card. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's just, it was just, it was frustrating in the end. Um, but I didn't think we played that badly. What have you got to say about that, Hutchie, then, in terms of the old, uh, we could have played all day card? And clearly, one of the things, if there's not many things you can beat town with this, this season, but one of the things that always or consistently comes up particularly after games like this, is they're not ruthless enough in front of goal. Was it Was it one of those? Did they create the, the opportunities and squander them? Uh, they had opportunities. I, this isn't kind of a Cheltenham here. We're not talking about a mm. bombardment where they just didn't get the finishing touch. It's more the, I would say it's more the creating of the opportunities here in this one. Ross mentioned Chaplin. Um, 
the one man you'd you'd want to try and score from there. Um, he didn't on this occasion. Uh, George Edmondson had a, a, a good header, headed chance. He did well to reach it um, and a good header after the break. Um, that was a good chance for Town. Um, but it, it kind of all, all added up to a fair amount of huffing and puffing with with no real signs of the house blowing down, um, really. Um, but front foot stuff, it's the stuff we, we, we have to expect from Ipswich now. I'm not, we come away from games talking about Town's dominance in it and mm. and how uh, but the shorthand for that is the possession stats. And that, that's, that's not really a stat I'm that interested in with Ipswich anymore, particularly when they're dominant in possession that 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 is Ipswich that's what they want to do that's what they're good at doing and that's what a fair amount of teams are more than happy for Ipswich to do I'm not that I'm not that fussed about the possession stats anymore because um it, it's about creating those chances and taking them uh, and that's what Ipswich didn't do didn't do in this one they didn't create enough inside the box a lot of it became speculative outside the box probing at the box without hmm without kind of tearing into to Wickham and and making making like guilt edge chances. That that's what didn't happen. But um Ipswich stuck to all of their principles, were able to play, but just didn't didn't find that touch. And you're not that, that's gonna happen, isn't it, in, in in football, in sport as a whole. You're not gonna win them all, um, unless you're the the New England well, they didn't win them all, did they? Touchy New England Patriots famously. Lost exactly. in the final game of the season. So you're and not I'm, yeah, exactly. They they would have they would have swapped a regular season loss for for winning it in the end, wouldn't they? So absolutely. Uh, yeah, you're not going to win them all generally. Um, should we talk about players um, by way of continuing this chat? Because Richard Keogh came in for Edmondson. I know he, um, Wolfenden, excuse me. Edmondson then replaced Keogh at half time. KVY stepped in for uh, for the injured Danassian. How how did they get on? I've been nodded at. Um, how did they get on? <laughs> Um, Kane Vincent Young had a difficult start to this game. Uh, I think I think Wickham could have done more of this, and I expected them to do more of this. They didn't put the ball on top of him, but they did work him, and he um, he found that a bit difficult at times. I thought early on he needed some help. He was getting caught. He went narrow and had had some more help, kind of come back to help him. And he did. He, he I think he found a footing and, and and got better. But I wouldn't say that the right back position was one of strength for Ipswich, particularly at the weekend. I thought Keogh did okay um, during his half on the pitch. Um, I, if, I was, I think at, at the start of the game, I was surprised that it wasn't Edmonton that got given given that start. Um, but by obviously at the end of the game, Kieran McKenna's then talking about how George is barely kind of training really with, a, with an injury himself and wouldn't really have been involved had, had it not been desperate. So, um, I, that was the only choice. For, fortunate, fortunately, George Edmondson w- was just about available for this game because he was needed at um, needed for the second half. Should we talk about some good? You you, you mentioned it earlier, Lee Evans, and also Marcus Harness seen uh, warm, which is that both of those guys are ahead of schedule, aren't they? So maybe there is something actually in that avocado ice cream and the TB twelve. <laughs> training protocols because it seems to me that the players are coming back earlier than expected particularly harness i mean he, he had what seemed to be quite a serious knee injury um and for him to be back on the grass is tremendous and i, I saw he was posting on instagram last week about going back and doing some brazilian jiu-jitsu which is uh, his hobby in, in ipswich and let me tell you if, you if you've got a knee problem that's not a sport you want to be doing so he's obviously pretty confident he's, he's getting back to full fitness how good was it to see those guys back rossi yeah, very good. Yeah, I, I was pleasantly surprised to see Lee Evans on the bench. And then, yeah, Mark Sarnes, I was watching him do his <laughs> runs. He was doing some shooting practice as well um, during the warm-up. But, um, yeah, you know, more bodies back. Um, although now we've got a lot of injuries in the, in the centre-backs roles and in mm-hmm. defensive roles. Because, um, yeah, for, for a while it was all the 10s out injured. Now it's like switch now. Um, but, now great to see him back. Of course, Lee Evans played 30 minutes, the final 30 minutes. And, you know, he, I think... Cameron Humphreys has done a fantastic job, but Lee Evans, Sam Walsey, what a partnership that is. Um, but no, it's good that we're getting these bodies back just you know, in time for these Christmas games um, or the festive period when there's games here, there and everywhere. Um, but no, t- two good bodies back and uh, yeah, hopefully we'll see some other ones as well. But hopefully, you know, other... Because, you know, Shawnee Luco again, second appearance, you know, came off the bench for this one. Um, but no, good to see bodies back. 
how Hutchie, I know you 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 and Stu are big admirers of Lee Evans. Um, how much better are town with him? I know Humphreys has stepped in and clearly a very talented young player, but what does Evans bring that Humphreys doesn't just can't bring? A lot, I think. Um before we talk about that, Cameron Humphreys is a really, really talented young player and he's done he's done well. Mm. But Lee a fit Lee Evans in there is a big upgrade for Ips, which I think I don't think it is a fully fit Lee Evans it, during his time on the pitch on on Saturday. I, I, he sat quite deep, um, kind of kept himself out of trouble a little bit, and did what he what he could. Um, but he's obviously a player that's been out for a few a couple of months with with injury and is only just coming back. So I, I'd imagine Humphreys may start again on Boxing Day. But having a bit more physicality from Evans in there is good. Um, Humphreys is a bit. We talked about this before. Humphreys is a bit more of a vertical player and will will play balls through the lines. That's great. Mm-hmm. There's nothing. That's that's a good thing that can get Ipswich moving. Evans can can do that, but he can also he's kind of the master of the diagonal and can stretch teams and move them about a little bit. And when you're trying to break a team down, um, a compact team uh, that's staying solid, you can't just go through the middle of them all the time. I, the Evans kind of out balls to the flanks to switch play. Remember under Paul Cook, um, under under Paul Cook, you just constantly hear change the play, change the play, and that's what Evans does. It's a, just it's a good thing to be able to do and just switch the ball around. So get him fully fit and get him playing alongside Morsi again. And I think I think you could see a real kind of upgrade for Ipswich in the middle of the pitch. Okay, shall we move on? Is there anything else you want to talk about from this game? Yep. No. I want to mention this for Andy because I know he loves this. Um, it didn't come off. It didn't. He didn't even get close to it. But Christian Walton came up for a corner late on, didn't he, Andy? Didn't happen though, did it? No, it didn't. No, it didn't. Nice he to see. Not, nice to yeah. see. He's had his yeah. opportunity. He's yeah. had. His yeah, this is this is it. He'll never. That will never happen for him like that again. <laughs> no. What you right there, Hutchie? Is there yeah. something going on? You, you, not like you were checking your your phone for breaking news. Was that? No. Uh, no. No. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Let's move on then, shall we? Um, Hutchie, bounce back ability, one of the best words in, words in football. Town, among many other things, are, are pretty good at that now, aren't they? Yeah, that's a, a you know a, a reason to be a reason to be hopeful. Um, just three league defeats this season. The previous two have been followed by really good runs. The first one was a loss at Plymouth, first defeat of the season. Town backed that up with a with three straight wins in the league. Um, then defeat at home to to Lincoln, backed up by two straight wins in the league. It's is kind of getting over these bumps in the road. Is that that's team you're going to lose? It's forty six game season. Mm. Um, Oxford marks the halfway point. Once that's played on Boxing Day, that's half the season done. And to have only lost three, hopefully only three in that point, um, it's pretty good. But even better is the way that it doesn't linger. They bounce back and um, just get back on it again. That's that's what that's what good teams do. It's what promoted teams do. Mm. I know. It, obviously, it's it's a small blow not to be top at Christmas when there's opportunity to do that. But before a ball was kicked in a classic football cliche, we'd all have taken second at Christmas, wouldn't we? There's no one that have gone ah, disappointing. Um, yeah, but like the, Kieran McKenna re- raises <clears throat> a really good exa- example of this. Wickham mm. is a perfect example of it. They finished five places and 13 points above Ipswich at the end of last season and lost the playoff final. Come Boxing Day, half a season later, Ipswich are five places and 13 points, the exact same margin that they were behind. They're now mm. ahead of Wickham by that exact same margin. That's progress. Um, the progress that Ipswich have made to this part has been not completely unexpected because we know that groundwork was laid during that that second half of the season under McKenna. Um, but e- even under McKenna, the progress has been clear because if you just take that half a season that McKenna had at the end of 21-22, I think Town was some. I think Town was sixth in the league table. If you take mm. the league table over that half a season, even from that, the next half a season, they're second. They've made progress from, from a good half a season under Kieran McKenna. So signs of progress are, are all there. Um, and go, they could they could be top on Boxing Day night. That's just as good as being top on Christmas Day. So there's reasons to be happy. Arguably better, I would say. Um, uh, in terms of progress, you mentioned their town are 17 points better off than they were this time last season, which is uh, which is fairly remarkable. And and this time last season, obviously, we we're talking about them just being dumped out the FA Cup at Barrow. 
Susan's is, dead. Uh, yeah, exactly. That's when you famously made made that statement um, and were yep. proved in the long run to be correct, boss. Kudos to you. By way of departing this chat around the game, I want to talk about the actual departure from the game. Uh, your husband, Hutchie, Stuart Watson's not with us today because he's doing a Chris Rear. He's driving home for Christmas. Um, and on Saturday, I don't know who was driving, but one of you was driving home from Wickham. And Stu shared what I can only describe as an intimate portrait of you tucking into a fajita. Was that at... Uh, burrito. Burrito at the services, which I particularly enjoyed. And I'm hoping now the uh, the Kauai Army won't disappoint and we'll get some memes from that to, to go with the one that I use every Friday, which is Hutchie tucking into a similar shaped uh, good um to indicate the dropping of a new pod uh, uh what was what was that Hutchie, just out of interest what were you what were you tucking into there it looked good it was the exact same thing that's in the original picture ah, okay. um of just a burrito from el Lovely. mexicana at, at Beaconsfield services is that where uh, la beast resides uh yeah yeah it's that wasn't a la beast la beast is a complete con and a waste <laughs> of waste of everybody's time so we don't, we don't do that but um yeah very tasty burrito for dinner Superb. Anything else to mention, Ross, before I uh, move on to something different? Any other notes from the road or indeed the game? It was just bloody cold. And a uh, big shout out to good old Ben Diaf, who gave me some sweets at half time. So um, always shout out to him. And also, um, I had a bag of Quality Street in my um, my bag. Um, you Thanks know, for sharing those, by the way. You hadn't, didn't, didn't see didn't <laughs> oh, see yeah. head nor tail of those during the day. No, I, I forgot about them. And I actually, I actually shared them with the away crowd. So if you were... Uh, one of those people, then hope you enjoyed your oh, the spirit of Christmas. Spirit of Christmas. I was sharing out to the photographers as well near me. Um, yeah, but I and, and in the end, I just went. I take the bag, everyone just take it, and you know, they then shared it in the away end. So yeah, that's it. Excellent. Ross knows where his bread is buttered. Um, yeah, sharing sharing the sweets with the fans. The, a man of the people is Roscoe. Right then, friends, we're going to talk about Oxford United um, coming up because this is probably going to be our last pod before Christmas. Um, but before we get to that, I want to take a special Christmas mailbag. We hadn't asked for any mailbag, but this morning when I opened my emails, there's a special little present there waiting um, from someone, uh, the ghost of Christmas past, shall we call him, um, which I thought we'd take before we move on to Oxford, which I'll just, I'm just going to play in now, boys. Um, here we go. Coons, it's Big Mick McCarthy here. How you doing? Are you looking forward to Christmas? Now, my mate Terry's gone down to the corner shop to get us some mince pies. While he's gone, I've got a question for you all. What's your best Christmas present you've ever had? And what's your worst Christmas present you've ever had? Now, that sounds like Terry's back with me mince pies. So I'm off to have one of them, a whole chocolate, and read me latest Mike Bacon novel. Merry Christmas to you all. I'm out of here. I particularly enjoyed the, the hitting of the table at the end. Sorry, Hutch, are you going to say? It's a bass. <laughs> well, whoever sent that in, and we do have suspicions, I think it's fair to say, had gone to the extent of creating a special Mick McCarthy email address to send but, it from, so as none the wiser. So nice to see. What nice was to the see email Mick address? Like, what is uh, the... It's like mick.mccarthy at Hotmail <laughs> or something. <laughs> Some one of them. Um, so, yeah, nice to see Big Mick. Nice to see that he's still listening to Kings of Anglia after all these years. Obviously, him, him and Stu got on particularly well. Um, so boys, I thought we'd take that special question from Big Mick because he's taking the time to send it in, which is what's the best and worst Christmas present you've ever had? We are what are we five days away now from I'd assume you're getting the best Christmas presents of your life. But up to now, what are the best and worst? Roscoe, I'm gonna start with you. It's it's gotta be a links in it or like a it's just I swear just every year it's just the same old, same old. It's always the same relative. They just give you, you know, a bit a bit of links or get, you know. <laughs> To, to be fair, that is handy because you know, so I don't need to worry about going to the shops myself. But uh, is it is it Lynx Africa though? The, the gold standard? No, it's normally like yeah, the very cheap version or Dove like Dove spray or something. Just you know, it's like really. But that would be that would be that would be the worst. I assume you're talking about. Yeah, Dove or Nivea Men or something. Like I don't mind Nivea Men like thingy cream and you know stuff like that. But yeah, I think what I've still got like loads. Like? Of... Adidas. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Bulldog, I like good old bulldog. Yeah, they're good, aren't they? Yeah, good. excellent. I've, I've got, I'm fond of those. And manscaped, of course. Um, of course, yes. manscaped and ginger ale to all your off. SEO needs. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's your worst. Have you got a best? 
Is there one that is it something giraffe related? <laughs> no more giraffes, please. Um, I think you know, stand like back in the day when I got my PlayStation Two, you know, a console. You know, that's what you asked all year, and hope that Santa was gonna bring up to you, and they did one year. So definitely, I think probably my PlayStation Two. Um, yeah, that's it really. A bit boring to be fair. Sorry. So. Solid. Solid. Yeah. Hutchie, what what are the best and worst gifts you've ever received? I know you don't generally get gifts anymore. Um, Scale electrics. Oh, when I was a, when I was a kid, I that think, is a banger. That, yeah, that's that was an an amazing year, um, and subsequent years. Uh, yeah, I got was great. It, I can it, still I can still smell it. I can, is it one know, of those ones where you had the one that you could, you could spin the wheels and it it, it had sort of smoke that came out of it and all that kind of stuff? Uh, I don't know if I ever had. It might have been a bit. I don't know if I ever had the smoky ones, but I can. Mm. I remember building the track and yeah, and racing them. Yeah, that bring that's made me smile just thinking about that. Doing that with my dad and brother um, when I was when I was little. That's um, that's made me smile a lot. Ah, oh, I as much fun as it was racing scale electrics, it was more fun to, in my opinion, to make them crash in horrific and um, exciting ways. I used to kind of find ways of, of creating the best car crash possible. I don't know what it says about <laughs> me as a person. Probably bad. Um, have you got any 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 terrible Christmas presents you can recall, Hachi? No, not. Not really. I'm not a massive fan of just novelty gifts for the sake of it. That's mm. not. I, I can't think of anything bad. Anyone that buys you a gift's nice, isn't it? But um, stuff just for the sake of it isn't great. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I agree with that. The best Christmas present I've ever got by Country Mile. Um, I remember fondly. And I'm gonna. I'm gonna age myself, date myself here. Was I think I was about nine or ten, and I got given a Walkman for Christmas. Um, uh, Roscoe, do you know what a, a Walkman is? Yes, I do. Excellent. Never had one, but no, I know what well, it is. no, you were born long after uh, they were <laughs> yeah. they were needed. Um, but Walkman at that point in time was like the thing to have. Uh, for the younger listeners, this is a, a handheld cassette player. <laughs> <laughs> nonsense um where you had to put cassettes in uh, and obviously you had the far less advanced earphones that i'm currently wearing just those foam ones but at the time as a nine-year-old boy that was the most exciting thing and also the most technologically advanced thing i've ever seen and also it, it's added to because that was the the one christmas i think my parents um recorded uh, i remember my dad had borrowed a huge like video camera which was on his shoulder it's like he was filming for the bbc um and there's there's footage somewhere still of me running around jumping up and down with this this walkman um which i then proceeded to play use the entire christmas i was never off that bloody thing um so there we go that's <laughs> did did you find when you had particularly with walkmans i don't i don't feel like this now when i just listen to music on my phone but did it make you walk differently? Oh, hundred yeah, percent. Make yeah. you strut, like because you you had to have a bit of a strut, didn't you? When you because yeah, clip it, to the, mine, clip it to the belt. There we go. Yeah. yeah, and you just just a bit of bit more hip movement in your walk and a one hundred percent. Yeah, I yeah. always used to get because my hair is quite kind of wiry and billowy, like the little hinge bit where you could make oh, your yeah. headphones bigger. I always used to get my hair cut, um, <laughs> caught in that. It's horrible, but worth it though. <laughs> Amazing. Listen, I bet Ross is thinking, pipe down, granddads. What are you just, just put, put your AirPods in. Just put just your, your AirPods, AirPods in. in. Yeah. No, no, um, no. I appreciate. I appreciate that that sort of stuff. Did because, you? Did yeah. you even? Did you even? Were you even around for the era of the discman, Roscoe? Yes. The CD yeah. discman, which were yeah. a lot of them were shite. They used to skip all the time, and then there was the mini disc player, obviously, which was short lived, and then we got onto onto uh, into the iPod era, which obviously is revolutionized things but i i read the other day hutchie if you've got an original walkman and i think the walkman was invented in the late 70s they're like 35 grand now to buy something ridiculous um so yeah, yeah. I, mine wasn't an original but uh i i fondly remember it um and also you kids of today will never understand having to re-spool cassettes yeah. hutchie yeah with with uh yeah. with pens after they did oh, uh, the peril of it the peril yeah of like is this gonna break is this the end because sometimes mm. the tape would come out the top and you wouldn't know you'd yeah. be doing it and, and mum would be like all right look hopefully this is gonna <laughs> hopefully this is gonna work and it's gonna be fine sometimes it wasn't 
Oh man, it was that was high peril. Those were the days. Uh, apologies, friends. We've gone all granddad on you there. Um, that's made me feel quite old. And Ross is just sitting there with a little grin on his face, thinking, <laughs> "Absolute nonsense! What are these two old men talking about?" <laughs> um, you'll get there one day. You watch ten years from now, Roscoe, when the kids are talking about having music played directly into their eyeballs. You'll be like, "I remember when you had to have earphones." Uh, anyway, I'm digressing. Let's move on. Um, thanks for that question, Mick McCarthy. Good to see you. I hope you're keeping well. Have a great Christmas, and thanks for taking the time to send that in boys we've come to about 35 minutes <clears throat> there's probably gonna be a shorter pod than normal um because there's not a huge amount to talk about but shall we talk about oxford united on boxing day which as it stands hutchy is going to be the biggest home crowd of the season so far for for ipswich town a season where they've had a lot of big crowds um and we are hurtling towards a potential sellout which god knows when the last sellout was well, can there ever be an, a, a sellout at Portman Road now? Because a lot of the seats are kind of restricted view and all that kind of stuff, aren't they? So, yeah, <clears throat> I, I, I guess they can. It's it's, mm. it's, it's difficult because there are there are seats. I think there will always be a spare seat in that stadium somewhere or another. Mm. Um, but wh- whether it's an actual sellout or not, it's going to be um, it's going to be another really really big crowd. Oxford are only bringing four hundred or so, mm. which is a, a a tad surprising um but that's kind of meant a slight rejig and of where like police and segregation are some tickets get lost when that happens but it does mean that it it will be the biggest the most while it may not actually be the biggest portman road crowd of the season it is going to be the most ipswich fans Ah, if that makes sense Um, i see so yeah it's Portman Road and how many people can actually fit in it is a little bit of a conundrum. I don't really know the true answer to this question. Mm. But either way, I think that the 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 thinking is that the most Ipswich fans inside Portman Road this season will be for will be for this game. Okay, I get I get you. I see where you're coming you, you from. See what, see where I'm going? I'm with you, absolutely. So that yeah. So but the game itself. Hutchie is is a good one, an interesting one uh, for a Boxing Day game. Um, you'll be there. You, you've been tweeting about how exciting it will be to have Boxing Day football back at Portman Road. It's something that hasn't happened for a while because of COVID and fixture scheduling, all that kind of stuff. But um, how are you feeling about this one? We're obviously a few days away from it now, but a good one. Yeah, I love box. I love Boxing Day football. This will be Town's first Boxing Day game since 2019, both, both due to COVID for the last two. <clears throat> um, it's a yeah, so it's always a special, always a special game um, to be there for. Particularly when the, the team's doing well, um, the attendance is going to be big. Um, so yeah, it's got all the makings of something of a, of a really, uh, a really good, a really good day. Roscoe, you'll be there after your, your Christmas turkey and your uh, your various festive fun. Um, how how are you feeling about this one? Have you been to since you've been working with us a, a Boxing Day game at Portman Road? I don't think so because I think the last time we had, was at the the Gilliam game where Paul Lambert sort of said, "Oh yeah, if he wants me to go, I can go," uh, and all that sort of stuff. And then wow. he signed a five year deal. Yeah, um, yeah. Thanks, thanks for that, Paul. That was a good Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I missed that game. Um, but no, I love a box day game. You know, once again, when you you know families get together and you know they're just having their um, leftovers and go, Let, let's get down to Portland Road, let's watch the game and uh, to have it back. It's going to be great. Just sadly, it's Oxford who are very boring. Um, so the, the famous chant, of course. Um, but no, looking forward to it. It should be a good day. Is that, that's that's got to lead the conversation in Hutch? Is it going to be what another another one of these games where Town are having mm. to try and break down a stubborn and and some would say dull approach from the away side? Oxford is such an interesting one because. They're a good football team, and, and and we've quite often gone in, into these games between Ipswich and Oxford, thinking this could be, this could be really good mm. because they both because both of them want to play. But what's tended to happen is it's just nullified. It's just pure teams like null, nullifying each other. Like look at the results in in League One. There's been four nil nil draws, a one nil Oxford win at Portman Road, and then the one one at Oxford. There's, um, Oxford last season when they they equalised really really late. So there's been three goals in six games between the two of these teams over the yeah. over the, the last three seasons, which um, which obviously points towards something similar this time. Um, it won't necessarily be Oxford kind of 
they don't necessarily kind of pack in and defend with the bus but what they do they do they do implement some of the uh, the darker arts of time wasting and, and and keeping the ball in um frustrating as much as anything so it's going to be a challenge it's going to be a challenge for town but i think that it's a challenge they're better equipped for now um because they're 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 having to learn how to deal with these games um i'd i'd I'd, I would back Ipswich to to win this game, but o- Oxford as well. Their their league position's not great. I think fifteenth mm, off, off my head. Yeah, they're down, but they're on a good run. They've they've they're yeah. unbeaten in ten. They haven't lost since the middle of October, and they've beaten some good teams in that time. They drew with Sheffield Wednesday at the weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a really. I think we'll, we'll we'll maybe learn quite a lot about Ipswich in this one. Um, we've already talked about them bouncing back and being a team that can respond to disappointments. Is it? This is an interesting one to come up on the heels of that because there'll be elements of that challenge again, um, and we can see just how quickly they can they can learn and improve. Mm. Um, so it should be an interesting one. Um, interesting team Oxford as well because we we are used to kind of their striker Matt Taylor being um, being a threat. Uh, he's only scored twice in the league this season, which is so- somewhat surprising. Um, their top scorer is Cameron Brannigan, who we've, we've talked about a lot as being a, a really good, really mm. good midfield player at this level. So um, threats, threats on the pitch for Oxford, um, a threat in the dugout as well in his own way. In Carl Robinson, <laughs> who's, who splits uh, splits opinion, um, and one where I'm, I'm just quite excited and intrigued to see what what Town can serve up against against Oxford. In terms of players, I've just been reading that they've lost Alex Gorin. Um, yeah. With his yeah. second serious knee injury of the season, which yeah. is a bit of a blow for them, isn't it? I'm just reading quotes here. Cole Robinson saying the news is soul destroying. It's hit the yeah. players, me and the staff, really hard. It's one of these ones where it was a non-contact injury as well, which which generally are, are the worst kind because uh, that invo- that involves doing something unpleasant to your ligaments normally. Um, Roscoe Oxford United. I've just been looking there. Their most common result this season is a draw. They've Ooh. had eight eight of those. Um, so do you reckon that means we're going to be in for another potential draw Boxing Day? Merry Christmas, everyone. Goldest yeah. draw incoming. Uh, yeah. You know, as as Suchi said, you know they are unbeaten in ten. You know, in their eight league games, but they've okay, they're unbeaten in eight in the league. But there's two wins, six draws, um, and yeah, one one draws all over the place. Draw specialists. Of course, we had Fleetwood the other week, and they were the draw mm. specialists, and that ended in a draw. Um, I've still got nightmares, to be fair, of the. Uh, 1-1 draw at Oxford at the end of last season. You know, when Burst and Selena scored an unbelievable goal, fantastic performance, unbelievable scenes in the way end. And then, yeah, they're late equaliser, which still hurts. I'm sorry to remind everybody. I'm sorry, Andy, Heathy, I'm sorry. It's, it, was, it's, it just still hurts. Um, but, yeah, they're not, they're not a bad side, Oxford. I just feel like when they play us, they just decide to be boring. And, yeah, they've got good well, skill players, though. I think that's a, maybe a mark of them being a yeah. team that can't, that, that want to do things the same way that Ipswich do them, do them, which is obviously a, an admirable way to play, but not necessarily having sort of the quality that Ipswich have got to to back that up, and maybe maybe recognizing that I might be speaking out of turn. Maybe they maybe when when they play Ipswich, they recognize that the quality is not on their on their side uh, as such, and um, you can't just kamikaze it and go right. Let's just go gung ho against a team that if we do that will. Will pick us off, so maybe maybe they're being sensible and just doing what they're they're um they're able to do. Right then, it's prediction time. This is the earliest I've ever asked you, asked you for a prediction. It's Tuesday, December the twentieth. This game is not until <laughs> Monday, December the twenty sixth. So, best part of a week away. Hutchie, what do you think is going to happen? One nil Ipswich Town. <sighs> That'd be good getting a clean sheet as well, wouldn't it? They've, they've been. Um, hard to come by in recent recent weeks. Roscoe? I'm not going to do the obvious answer because that is boring. Um, and I already said it. Um, do you know what? It's going to be a Boxing Day classic. Why not? Let's go. <laughs> Follow your head. Follow your head. <laughs> right, go my heart. Go my heart, boys. I've gone my heart this season. I was saying top town, top two and all that. And why not? Come on. Come on, town. I know there's probably some town players listen to this. Please. Bloody win! Let Christmas Day t- times two. Let's let all the fans leave the ground, enjoy the rest of their 
Christmas spirit with a nice 3-0 win. So that's Ooh, what I'm going with. 3-0? Yeah. That'd Why not? That would be very tasty indeed. So that, that you're be. essentially saying there to the town players and indeed management who we know listen to this, don't mm. spoil Christmas for everyone Yeah, pretty much. by laying an egg at Portman Road on Boxing Day. Get plenty of goals and we can all go home happy. Hutch, is there, is there a million pound pick to throw into this heady mix? Uh, no, <laughs> no. Uh, no, fair enough. No, I hadn't even considered it. Um, last the one at the weekend didn't didn't come off because Ipswich didn't score, so there was no wow. chance of seeing anybody's breath in the in the uh, in the goal scoring and pictures. To be fair to you, we only decided to even talk about Oxford uh, about a minute before I press record on this podcast. So the fact you haven't got a million pound pick doesn't surprise me. And it's probably talk, a little bit unfair. Let me have a think. Let me have a think. Talk 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 about amongst yourselves. Give me a okay. second. Rossi, what have we got coming up the rest of the week then? We've got fan social coming up, haven't we? Um, on th- Is it going to do that Thursday night? Do you know who's going to be on it yet? Yep. At the moment, it's going to be James Farthing, who um, I'm sure he's happy for me to share. He's, he's actually moving to New York in uh, next year. So I'm wow. um, going to be another town fan overseas. Um, so, yeah. Just, just, just James? Just for now. We're still sorting out the... You know, prices oh, okay. for the other guests oh, okay. and stuff. Yeah, still in negotiations. <laughs> yeah, um, cool. And also, Rossi, we're going to tease something that um, you're planning to do tonight, something a bit exciting. Mm-hmm. You're going to do a live video on our various yes. platforms tonight. What's it going to be? So it's going to be like a bit of a season review so far, looking back. Oh, it was going to be a, a review of 2022, but I, I've scrapped that idea because we don't care about January, February, <laughs> March. Eh? But that happened. We finished 11th for League One. So it's yeah. sort of a season review so far, looking back at the key moments. Um, I may have a few guests as well popping on. Um, good old Bono may be joining me. So, nice. um, but yeah, 7 p.m. Hopefully at 7 p.m. I'll try my best to be, be on time. Uh, but no, yeah, it should be good. It'll be, about, it'll be about quarter past seven. Quarter yeah. past seven. But now get involved <laughs> in the comments. Um, and yeah, share your thoughts. It's always good to... I enjoyed doing the FA Cup draw. Um, hopefully if we beat Rotherham, there'll be the, the fourth round draw live as well. And hopefully it'll be a better draw than Rotherham. Mm. Oxford have got Arsenal, by the way, in the third round. So they got a good draw. Um, but now nah, look forward to it. Superb. So that's that's tonight. If you listen to this pod contemporaneously, as most people do, I understand. Um, so 7 p.m. Tuesday, December the 20th on our various platforms, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. Is it all across all of those, Rossi? No, just on YouTube, to be fair. Just on, okay. <laughs> Ignore what I just said. It's just on YouTube. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hutchie, has my um, my frantic filling there helped you decide on a million pound pick? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I haven't done it. The old faithful I haven't done it for ages because he hasn't done it for ages either. Sam Morsey hasn't scored a goal for a very long time. Oh, okay, um, but I can just picture him. He's he's been very very good in recent weeks. Very good again at, at Wickham at the weekend. Needs a goal though. I, he's capable of scoring these goals. He's getting into the positions on the edge of the box. So I would I think Sam Morsey to score for Ipswich in this in this game. He hasn't he hasn't scored since the Charlton game. So. I will give you odds have obviously lengthened since Morsi's not scored for a while. I'll give you eleven to one on Morsi scoring. I'm going to put some Christmas cheer into three hundred thousand pounds on wow. Sam Morsi to score at eleven to one. That would make Christmas good for everyone, wouldn't it? Hopefully, yeah, three, for everyone. That three 0 win that, that Rossi's talking about. All right, friends, we've come to the end of the show. Um, we've done just under fifty minutes of podcast gold. I'm sure you'd agree. Um, anything else to mention, boys? We've talked about the stuff to look out for tonight. Don't miss Rossi's live video on YouTube at 7 o'clock. Don't miss Fan Social, which will come to you Friday morning. Um, yes, Ross? Also, a Tractor Girls talk as well coming your way as well because they've they finished their 2022 fixtures, so they got a win. So look forward when, to that. When, when will that drop? Tomorrow at some point. Tomorrow on Wednesday. So there you go. Lots of stuff coming your way. And also, obviously, the Christmas Day special, friends, which I mentioned earlier, which will drop on audio and video at 6 a.m. on Christmas Day. Our little gift to you. It's us not talking about football at all. It's us playing Would I Lie to You, um, a vehicle essentially created around Mike Bacon, who looks extraordinary on the video, I must say. Um, (laughs) Absolutely worth watching on video just for that. Um, so yeah, it's basically us lying to each other and trying to decide who's lying and, and learning, I would say boys, quite a lot about each other in the process. Would you, would you agree, Hutchie? I don't like any of what I learned about, about <laughs> all of you. I, I, I came, I came away from it thinking what an awful bunch of people that I work ter- with. A terrible bunch of liars they are. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah so definitely give that a look uh hopefully enjoy that a little christmas present to you um ready for you and waiting on christmas day hutch anything else to mention no other business roscoe anything else to mention no other business super well that wraps it up then for this side of Christmas anyway, from the Kings of Anglia point of view, the flagship pod. Look out for the, all those things we've already mentioned. Also support our sponsors. Use the code KOA at manscaped.com for 20% off and free delivery of all that excellent stuff they've got there. And obviously also support Ginger Pickle Marketing. If you're in a pickle and you need help with your marketing, get involved with Tony Southgate and the boys at Ginger Pickle. Hutchie's just displaying his sponsored hoodie. A man of uh, a man of honour is Hutchie. Um, yeah, anything, anything to do with digital marketing, SEO, any of that, get involved with them and also friends we've not had a five-star review on itunes for a while um so it'd be nice if you felt that as a christmas gift you could give us a five-star review on itunes because it helps lift our visibility in the itunes charts means that we're up there in the charts and also more people can find us and get involved in this which is obviously what we want friends it's been an epic 2022 we are just days away from Christmas, Ipswich Town are second in the table. Just let that sink in. Yes, they're not top, but second, still bloody good. 17 points ahead of where they were this time last season, which is tremendous. Um, so have a great Christmas, friends. Whatever you're doing, enjoy it. Thanks so much for listening this year. Um, and we will speak to you on the other side.